Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. It's late in the afternoon and uh, me and my parents are going to Brunswick Point, somewhere in the uh, southern part of the Greater Vancouver area to see the sunset. As you can see, this part of uh, Vancouver is really rural uh, with lots of uh, wilderness around. So we're heading over to the trail to see uh, the sea and lots of grass and wild flowers. The forms and colors of nature are always so soothing. Here I am walking along the trail and I'm going to find somewhere to sit down and sketch something before doing my sunset sketch. Looking around, there are a lot of farmhouses, farm fields in this area. I think that would be so cool to live in one of those farmhouses. And these are beautiful pink flowers. Just walking and walking. It's so quiet here. Um, I can only see one or two people passing by every 10 minutes or so. Here I'm sitting down at the bench, at the bend of this trail. And yeah, I'm going to sketch the very simple view in front of me of the trail leading into the distance. A really nice sense of perspective. So I'm beginning with this foreground tree over here on the left hand side, drawing its contour outline very, very quickly. Oh, as you can see, it's pretty windy and I forgot to bring my clip. So I found sketching in nature to be much more relaxing compared to doing urban sketches like, uh, you know, drawing buildings and other urban structures. Because there actually, there's no mistakes when we're sketching nature forms like trees and bushes. There are no strict rules like perspective about drawing trees and, and bushes and grass, right? So just relax and just pay attention to the proportions. So in general, trees in the foreground, they look much bigger than the trees in the middle ground and in the, uh, in the background. As you can see, this tree I'm drawing right now is looking much smaller and shorter. And same for uh, this tree here. And now I'm also drawing the contour outline of the mountain ranges in the far distance. Now drawing these two important lines to depict the perspective of the trail and some more loose lines for the foliage forms. Another tree behind right there and some more bushes along this horizontal line there in the distance. And now I'm moving on to this uh, field over here to use very organic lines to summarize the form of these wild grass combined with uh, flowers. Again, there are no mistakes. Just loosen up, speed, uh, speed up your pen and try to capture the spirit, the movement of these grass swaying in the wind. So that's the point of sketching on location. We're not trying to make our lines looking so neat, right? So just relax. So when we're sketching landscapes, I think the most important thing is to know where the horizon line is. As you can see, it's a little bit lower from the very middle. Okay, just add some more grass blades. Now I see a couple with a dog walking closer to me. I'm gonna just draw them. They're in the distance. Just very quick squiggly lines. We draw the man holding the dog on a leash and the lady, yep. Yeah. And some more uh, pebbly texture for the, for the trail. So that's it for the line work. It took me about, um, let's say, 10 minutes to draw. Now, uh, the painting progress is going to be in real time speed. Okay, yeah, so what you're watching right now is in real time speed. I'm going to begin painting the sky area. First of all, I'm wetting it with clear water, so the blue is going to spread out very smoothly without any dry brushing. And a sky with you know bits of clouds or large clusters of puffy clouds are much more interesting than just a flat blue sky, right? So today um, it's pretty good. I really like the sky that I'm seeing right now. It has really light streaks of white thin clouds around the middle to the bottom of the sky. 
So I'm grabbing a little cerulean blue, mix it with a little bit green so I get a turquoise. Because I first wetted the uh, sky area with clear water, um, this turquoise blue is getting a little diluted by the water on the paper. Okay, so uh, when we're doing watercolor painting, we don't have to always have a perfect diluted tint in our palette. We can always use water on the surface of the paper to dilute. Okay, and um, when I'm painting sky, I always begin with the very top of the uh, sky area. Now, getting to the middle, the sky is getting looser with these thin streaks of clouds, so my brush stroke um, is getting thinner. I'm holding my brush very much like 90 degrees uh, to the surface of paper, so I'm able to create these uh, delicate brush strokes. So the key about painting a simple and loose sky like this with thin streaks of clouds is to control your hand pressure holding the brush at the same time being very sensational. So every single brush stroke is a little bit different, having a slight different tone of turquoise blue. For the very bottom of the sky, closer to the peaks of the mountain ranges, I'm mixing in a little bit of green because late in the afternoon, um, the sky close to the horizon has a bit of greenish tone due to aerial perspective and to how the uh, lights are being reflected onto the sky. And I'm also painting the negative spaces of this foreground tree over here. So when I'm painting this blue, I'm not worried about painting exactly inside those tiny holes inside the trees because the, uh, the blue is very mild. The green I'm going to add on top is not going to be affected by this super diluted blue very much. Okay, so I think that's very much it for the sky area. It's very light and pretty simple, relaxing. Now I'm wetting the uh, grassland area with clear water and also the mountains. So for the very first layer, for grassland, I like to uh, just put on a really nice layer of yellow ochre. It's late in the afternoon and the sun is very low in the sky, having a lot of yellow and orange tones reflected onto very much everything in the world, especially trees and grass. I found foliage to have more of a golden tone um, later in the afternoon, in the evening, around, uh, around sunset time. Yep, this uh, yellow ochre pretty much diluted for everything below the horizon. And this landscape right now, at this uh, specific time of the day, late in the day, I think it's much more interesting compared to midday when the sun is right in the very middle of the sky, shining straight down, uh, making everything having a flat color. So right now there's a lot of contrast and charming colors of sunset coming up. Yeah, so very much all the foliage forms are getting this uh, yellow ochre tint from the sunshine. And by the way, I am using a uh, Hannah Mill watercolor sketchbook and the paper is pretty thin compared to my Speedball watercolor sketchbook. This paper I'm using right now, I, I believe it's only 90 pounds, um, only able to stand for like a couple layers of light washes. The paper warps up very easily. Okay, but that, I don't mind it. Okay, so the first layer for the foliage is done. Now I'm doing wet onto moist, second layer. This is a mix of viridian green with cadmium yellow. And I'm using very bold brush strokes. So when you're doing wet onto moist, your brush stroke is gonna be visible, but I'm um, gonna be faded out. Okay, wet onto wet, uh, some pure viridian green, because the sun is on the left, the right side, of trees, of everything, are shaded. So viridian green or hooker's green are very helpful greens. They're so handy for us to paint landscapes. Okay, and you can mix uh, several kinds of yellows into them to get uh, yellow greens. So yeah, we don't need too many uh, colors when painting landscapes. Okay, keep grabbing some more viridian green, mix a little bit lime green into it. The colors are so vibrant. 
So on a sunny day, we can see so many more lighter tones of greens and very minimal amount of green shades. Okay, for the uh, far distance uh, grass, just like horizontal brush strokes to summarize the form very vaguely. For these ones in the uh, foreground, short vertical brush strokes. Keep adding more, so this yellow green town, and I feel there's a bit of yellow ochre town for, these, for this tree here. There's so many types of greens out there in the uh, nature world. It's always inspiring to paint in nature because there are always endless possibilities. Green is a very soothing color for both our eyes and our spirits. Yet again, some slightly darker shade of green on the right side of the tree. The sun is on the left, sinking down towards the horizon. And now grabbing some pure, varying green. Again, you can use hooker's green. So when painting foliage, as you can see, I'm using a lot of punching gestures and not stirring. Because punching, it gives a, a really nice illusion of puffiness for these uh, trees and bushes. Yeah, so just getting these uh, stronger greens in. Yeah, so I think this strong green right now is getting a really good balance along the uh, horizon line. So when painting very much everything, we need a sense of weight or be bold about using um, heavier colors, not just one single kind of tone. It takes um, a very long time, many years of experience to be able to see the different levels of that same color in a given landscape or any subject matter. So for this landscape over here, the challenges for beginners is able to see um, the tints and shades of greens and finding a good balance between the levels of greens, playing with water control. So for some areas, I might be mixing less water and have denser paint, just so that area stand up better, especially for the foreground elements. So the trail and also the bottom part of those grass blades are having a really nice yellow tone and the trail has a super diluted yellow. So this part, it creates a very nice opening that gives everything in this landscape a space to breathe and also a very good part to invite the viewers into looking at this landscape. So um, really consider your composition before you put your first lines to paper. Okay, so it's very important to include this trail as part of this sketch. Now I'm grabbing a little bit of cerulean blue, mix it with a bit of cobalt blue, dilute it a little bit, but it's a slightly denser blue compared to the sky for the mountain ranges in the distance. Because of aerial perspective, mountains in the distance, um, they seem of a really good soothing blue. Their actual color is actually green, but because of um, you know the air particles, uh, is changing their original tones. So we're actually seeing an illusion. And there's actually a bit of a um, blue transition of variation of towns on these mountain ranges. So now I see the top part of these mountains um, are of a darker shade of blue. So again, this is a mix of cerulean and cobalt blue containing less water. The bottom looks a little bit foggy. Okay, so now I think I need to add some more heavy tones for the grassy area. So I'm just adding this loose horizontal brush stroke of verdant green with a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in. So it's a shade of green for that part. So in general, it's a mixture of many grass blades together. They're in the far distance. And also for the right part of this tree here. So again, when painting very much everything in the world, really know where the light source comes from. So in this case, it's on the left, right? So that means uh, the right side of everything here are 
very heavily shaded, so make sure we don't overpaint onto the left side, which should be pretty bright, illuminated by the sun. Yeah, just adding some very tiny little brush strokes here and there. And use teeny tiny brush strokes to get those masses of trees in the far distance in between the farmhouses done. Just using brush strokes to abstractly suggest what those things could be. And now I want to glaze a stronger layer of yellow green for the grassland over here. So glazing means wet on dry. All right, so this is very much um, the mix of cadmium yellow and just a little bit of viridian green. Mixing in a little bit more viridian green so we'll have a, a bit of different tone of green for these um, shaded areas in between the rows of grass just to give a little bit more three dimension. Okay, so now I see that I need to add more contrast for the right side of this foreground tree. Um, this shade of green is made with viridian green and a bit of uh, burnt sienna. So this is uh, my first time trying this Hannah Muell paper and I see that the color is sort of like fading away after it's completely dry. So now I'm actually adding a stronger layer on top of the, uh, the fading colors underneath. So it always happens when you're trying um, a new paper that you are not so familiar with. Um, every single paper, it takes different um, methods to control how the color is going to turn out. And same for the bushes underneath the foreground tree. This is also the foreground area that needs to have more density and sense of volume. So again, this is very much the same shade color of green, very then mixed with a bit of burnt sienna. So every single brush stroke is a slight different tone of the same shade of green. So some areas that might be diluting the shade color a little bit. So it's not way too strong. Then using a lot of choppy dotting brush strokes to get a rough texture of grass and tumbling bushes. Same for here, just for the bottom part of the grass blades. Needs to have a stronger tone. And don't worry too much about your brush strokes when you're painting nature because a lot of um, elements in nature are actually indeed having a rough texture, especially wild grass, bushes. So we need these kind of stippling and um, dotting and short segments of brush marks to depict the roughness of, of nature. And just keep going. So again, because um, this is the foreground area, it needs to have more weight. So having more weight means having denser colors, uh, much less diluted with water. All right, just keep going with these very organic thin brush strokes, almost holding my brush 90 degrees to the paper. And now I just grabbed a little bit of uh, magenta Again, use these little dotting brush strokes to paint the wild flowers there in the middle ground. So here I am playing with water control. So every single brush stroke is of a different value of the same magenta pink color. So just added like two or three stronger dots for those ones on the left. So there's a sense of depth for these flowers that they're actually once in front of another and just really lightly putting these depictions of flowers on here using pretty gentle hand pressure following the rhythm of nature that i feel in front of me yeah and i think that these magenta colors of the flowers are really adding a nice sense of interest um, to this landscape mostly having greens and blues so this is a great uh, choice of landscape to sketch. Yeah, so very nice little ornaments of these flowers going through this landscape. Yeah, got some more tiny little dots. 
And it's really amazing that these wildflowers are surviving so well in the wilderness that、um, they don't need a lot of human care. They just thrive. All right. So now I just want to add a bit more contrast for the grass in the、uh, foreground with an even concentrated mix of Viridian green and burnt sienna. Yeah, so the very bottom, I want it to look the heaviest. So as you can see,、uh, once after every few dots, I'm using these horizontal brush marks to kind of organize these dots better, so they don't look too random, scatter around in this area. And now I'm adding a strong concentrated shade of green for that area. I think it's probably the cast shadow. From the trees there in the distance, and some more shaded little spots here for this foreground area on the left. Same color. So when painting in nature, when we're painting lush greens, we don't need a lot of colors. All we need is probably a viridian green, a lime green.、Uh, color number three could be yellow ochre. Color number four could be lemon yellow or cadmium yellow. Just play around with the ratios of mixing these four different colors together, so you get different kinds of greens. There could be so many possibilities. All right. So lastly, it's a pretty important decision to make is to paint the shadow of the foreground tree here, laying right in the foreground of the trail here.、Uh, again, this is my own mix of gray with cobalt blue. Royal purple and a little bit of green, so I get a really interesting kind of gray, kind of similar to Payne's gray, but I always like to mix my own. Sometimes the shadow could be more bluish, or purplish, or greenish, depending on the situation. And、um, softer grays, which are more diluted with water for other objects in the distance. And that's very much it for this little sketch that took me about, say, twenty-five minutes on location here while waiting for the sunset. Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I try to update my channel with two to three new videos every week. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how I sketch the sunset at Brunswick Point. See you soon, everyone. Bye.